So we had the uh, opportunity to present the updated results from the Griffin trial. So this is a randomized phase two trial that looked at RVD-based therapy for transplant eligible multiple myeloma patients. So, so patients were assigned one-to-one -to, -one to either a standard of care, which was RVD for four cycles, followed by a MEL200 autologous stem cell transplant, two cycles of post-transplant cons uh, post consolidation, and then two years of lenalidomide maintenance therapy, although they were encouraged to continue further um, after the trial was over. The experimental arm got the very same thing, with the one difference being that they got weekly daratumumab during their induction uh, uh, RVD. They got a day one dose of daratumumab in their two cycles of post-transplant consolidation, and they received daratumumab with their lenalidomide maintenance therapy over the first two years. So at ASH this year, we've actually uh, presented the uh, updated results of that particular trial with all of the patients having completed at least two years uh, of maintenance therapy. And what we were happy to report, and not unexpectedly, uh, the rates of complete response significantly uh, increased in those uh, patients assigned to the daratumumab arm versus the control arm. So CR rates by the end of two years of maintenance therapy were achieved in approximately 80% of the patients in the experimental arm versus 60% uh, in the control arm, and the rates of stringent CR were also much higher in the four-drug regimen versus the uh, uh, triplet. When we looked at MRD negativity at 10 to the minus 5 level of sensitivity, you know, we uh, captured uh, that rate by intent-to-treat analysis of 64% uh, by the end uh, of two years of maintenance therapy, as opposed to only 30% uh, for those in the control arm. So we more than doubled uh, the rate of MRD uh, negativity. And interestingly, what we saw is from the end of one year of maintenance therapy to the end of two years of maintenance therapy, uh, the rates of MRD negativity at 10 to the minus 6 level sensitivity significantly increased. Now, whether that was a delayed effect of the daratumumab in the initial treatment or an, an impact from the maintenance is not clear because the study wasn't designed to answer that question, but it is of interest that the response has deepened over the course of maintenance, suggesting that maybe there is increased power of the uh, two-drug maintenance platform. The other thing that we looked at was uh, sustained MRD negativity. So if you look at those patients that captured MRD negativity for at least 12 months or more, uh, we uh, hit that mark in approximately 44% or so uh, of the patients uh, on the quadruplet arm versus only 13% uh, for those in the control arm. And then probably the most important thing that we showed uh, at this updated analysis is that there is a progression-free survival advantage that's beginning to uh, emerge with longer follow-up. So at three years, progression-free survival in the quadruplet arm was approximately 89% uh, versus 81% uh, uh, for those uh, on the triplet arm. Both groups doing very well, but the PFS hazard ratio was 0.46. Now, this was a randomized phase two study, not a phase three study, and it was not powered on progression-free survival. So the confidence interval of that progression-free survival uh, hazard ratio is quite broad and goes out to 1.01, so it doesn't quite hit statistical significance, but I think it's pretty clear that that PFS advantage is beginning to emerge. And we've seen that whenever a CD38 monoclonal antibody, whether it's daratumumab or esituximab is added to a standard of care regimen in multiple myeloma, deeper responses, which invariably translates into better progression-free survival.